What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch. It's great to have you back. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting a ton of ads on Facebook for the M1 by Monster Tech. Now, if you've never heard of the M1 before, basically what Monster Tech is trying to do is make the evolution of what Flipper Zero is. They want to make a device that has all the same features of Flipper Zero, but added Wi-Fi and a more powerful processor. Now, this product is still in Kickstarter phase. Well, actually, by the time you see this video, it'll be over. If there are any updates whatsoever on this, by the time the video drops, I'll add them in so don't worry we're not missing out on anything now i know a ton of you guys have reached out asking me to cover this so you know what today is the day let's go All right, so first things first, I figure we should, you know, hop on down to the Kickstarter, take a look at everything they got to offer and kind of digest all of it piece by piece. All right, so here we are on the Kickstarter. Right off the bat, we can see they've raised over a million dollars on this. That's huge. Remember the Cyper Pro we talked about a few weeks ago? That only raised like $170,000. So the $1.1 million is a ton. However, it's still less than the almost 5 million that Flipper raised. The one thing I'm a little confused by, and it's probably just because I don't know Kickstarter, is that they're only looking to get $10,000, which is a ridiculously low number to actually make something. The Flipper and Cyber Pro, they're both at like 50 to 60K. I mean, that's neither here nor there, so whatever. I really don't care. <laughs> All right, so let's check out their Kickstarter video and kind of dissect a little bit of that, figure out what we're looking at here. All right, let's do it. Inspired by the exploration of hackers and the creations at Maker Labs. Meet the M1, your all-in-one tech companion. A monster tool in compact form. Okay, so I've been trying to figure out what kind of screen is on this thing. I'm not sure if it's an OLED or an inverted LCD. It's really hard to tell. It, I mean, I've seen a bunch of pictures. I really don't know yet, but hey, maybe we'll figure it out in the video. Imagine a world where you no longer need to fumble around with multiple remotes. With the M1's infrared capabilities, all your remotes are under one universal controller, preloaded with a library of commonly used remote commands. Functions like volume adjustment or temperature control are... I'm not going to lie, the first time I saw this video, I'm like, why is this guy doing this over and over again? But, okay, he's trying to prove a point. It's hot, turn the air conditioner on. Hey, we got ourselves an M1 for that. Got you. ...are always at your fingertips. Read and store NFC cards and tags. Scan and clone RFID cards and fobs. Analyze signals, open gates, doors, and boom barriers. Featuring... Hold on a second. Let's go back real quick. This is crazy. Um, It's great. Whoop. Also, rolling codes, car keys, not going to work. I'm sorry. No matter what processor's in there, it's not going to get rolling codes to work. It's not doors and boom bear yeah what is up with this garage door this is the wackiest garage door i've ever seen featuring on whose door works that way i know mine doesn't well my garage door doesn't even have an opener but still whose door opens like that board wi-fi also deploy your own payloads and scripts that's a bad usb use gpio pins to interface with hardware Transfer data. See All right, I do want to point out, this is like the most adorable little hacker den I've ever seen. We got the little peanuts things on there. We got the giraffe. Giraffe's over there like, Hide the planet! Hide the planet! Shut up and get in the car! Hide the planet! Seamlessly yeah. between your M1 and computer. Inter so I'm not going to give them a huge hard time over this, but if you look really closely, we can zoom in. Let's uh, play right here. Seamlessly between your if M1 you really and computer. The screen, uh, right there, you can see the play pause button, which basically means he's playing a video on the screen. Of course, we know this isn't exactly what hacking looks like. You know, it, everybody wants to make it look cool. It doesn't look super cool like it does here. But again, I get it. They're making a Kickstarter video. Not everything's going to be exactly as it seems. They're trying to make something that looks cool and get people to want to pay for it. So... I'm not going to fault them on that. I'm just going to point it out. Interact with devices and even extend functions with modules. The M1 by Monster Tech. It's a tool for today, built for tomorrow. Man, I tell you what, these bunnies, they get me every time. Where are my bunnies at? Here we go. Uh, yeah, look at the little bunnies in the front yard. I love those. I don't care. It's a cool house, but like, I was so surprised to see the little bunnies there. I guess it matches the room, but... Yeah, it's funny. I like it. You know what I also like is this segue to today's sponsor. 
PCBWay. You've heard me say time and time again about how PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCBs and 3D printing. But what's also really cool is that right now they're running their 10th annual PCBWay badge design contest. This year's contest theme is a decade of innovation with PCBWay. The grand prize winner can win $1,000 in cash. And then two runners up will win a $200 PCBWay coupon. PCBWay is even offering free prototyping on any design that matches their design requirements. They'll even throw in a $50 coupon just for participating. So check out the contest on the link down below. Thank you as always, PCBWay, for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. I truly appreciate it. Let's get back at it. All right, so that's the Kickstarter video. You know, not bad, no real huge sins. Obviously, there's some, you know, edited video on the screen when he's using bad USB or whatever he's doing. Uh, we have the car keys, which people can't help themselves, but show it cloning car keys. Again, we know it doesn't really work that way. And, you know, cute bunnies. So win-win for everybody. All right, enough bunnies. Let's scroll down and see what this thing's really all about. Um, obviously, we've got a story here. You can read that on your own. What we're interested in are the tech specs. So yeah, right off the rip, we see we've got a 1.54 inch LCD, which is slightly bigger than a flipper's 1.4 inch LCD. So obviously that answers the question I had before, it's an LCD, so question answered. Thanks documentation. We can also see our GPIO pins, which are staggered, so there's like not five and five. Uh, really makes way more sense than having equal number of pins, because then you can plug the board in backward, which in most cases would be really bad. All right, moving on down to the MCU. They're going with an STM32H as opposed to the STM32 that the flipper uses. Long story short, it uses an ARM Cortex M33 core, which is just slightly more powerful than what flipper uses. Now, it's also important to remember at the end of the day, it actually has more to do with how the software developers utilize that processor, almost more than the processor itself really good code running on a slower processor typically will have a better end result than sloppy code on a more powerful processor. Moving right along, let's see, we go down to infrared, and I actually really like how the infrared on that goes straight. Like if we look at our flipper zero right here, it's you know kind of off to an angle, so you wanna hold it like this, but when you're actually using it, you kind of gotta hold it like this, not a huge deal, but you know, a little wonky. So it's nice to have a straight on IR. Onwards. Let's see, RFID. So we know all about RFID from Flipper Zero. It's gonna be able to do pretty much do the same things as Flipper Zero when it comes to RFID. And it, yeah, it shows them scanning an RFID card. Pretty simple. All right, NFC, same idea. They don't appear to be using credit cards. It just says card emulation. So I do really appreciate that. And them not trying to look like they're using this thing to pay for things with credit card machines, because we all know, not gonna happen. Knife hands. Cha -cha -cha. All right. Sub gigahertz and more. It uses a, oh, it's an SI4363 instead of a CC1101. Now the SI4463 and the CC1101 both have the same output power at plus 20 decibel milliwatts. What is different is the fact that the CC1101 does support variable packet lengths. Now I have no idea if that actually matters, but if you do know, leave a comment down below and let me know. All right, moving on and copying car keys. Come on, just stop showing copying car keys. We don't need it. Hardware hacking. Oh, cool. So M1, similar to rubber ducky, is going to mimic a USB slave device. They're going to use bad USB. Sorry, Corbin over there at uh, Hack5. Another person ripping off ducky script. Apologize for that. Well, not my fault, but still kind of sucks. Nothing particularly new or exciting here, but you know, again, it supports bad USB, fun times. Uh, SD card storage, no kidding. Uh, GPIO pins, again, no surprise there. You really, really need GPIO. GPIO is really the backbone of all these devices because it allows them to do a ton more stuff than what they were originally created to do. All right, open source, great. Yeah, everybody loves open source. We're all about it. Plugins, same thing. Um, platforms, obviously we can, if you're not going to make a device that's multi-platform, don't even bother in this day and age. And then in progress is Wi-Fi. Now I'm going to go under the assumption that in progress really means there, it's going to happen. There's absolutely no reason to make this device without Wi-Fi. Creating this device without Wi-Fi would effectively just make it a flipper zero, but without the two years of community building and Firmware building and all the stuff that everybody's been doing, it makes no sense whatsoever to make this without Wi-Fi. We'll keep on trucking, plug in library. Again, just like the Flipper App Store. Yeah, we're calling it the App Store. Are we not calling it the App Store? I can't remember the marketing anymore. But anyway, they've got the mobile App Store and they have the one on labs.flipper.net. 
Okay. Stretch goals, multiple colors at 80,000. Obviously, they did that. Uh, let's see. And then, yeah, same with pet tag. I'm assuming they're just adding support to the firmware. There might be some licensing. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, yeah, universal two factor. So, my guess is it has something to do with licensing. And another video. So, we've got the M1 prototype video. Let's take a look. Welcome to our live prototype video of the Monster Tech M1. It's a digital multi tool for technophiles and hackers. It's sleek, it's smart, and it's packed with some really cool features that we're about to show you. So, let's get right into it. The one thing I do want to point out about this video is it's actually in 720p. It's super, super blurry. I, I get it. Sometimes it's hard to get a good camera and stuff for these things, but this is a prototype video where we're supposed to take your word that this is going to work and having a blurry video makes things feel a little suspect. Again, I'm not going to fault you guys for it. You guys are new, but in the future, definitely, definitely get a halfway decent camera. What shall we? We're going to show you the RFID read function. Here we have an RFID card. Now from the main menu on our M1, we select 125 kilohertz. Now we'll go ahead and choose read. And there you have the card type and other info. All right, and yeah, we have more blurry screen of him using the M1. Uh, again, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on because you can't read anything. So I'm just gonna actually skip ahead to him opening a gate with it, which is a bit problematic. And now for the sub one gigahertz function. Here's our boom gate controller. Now we're going to clone it with our M1. We choose the sub gigahertz from the main menu. Then we select read, then clone the controller and save. We go back to the previous menu and under saved, we see the remote we just cloned. And now we'll test it out. And boom, no pun intended. All right, so if you don't know what I'm on about, basically what happened was he's standing next to the gate and then he clones his actual gate activator or remote uh, and then he uses the M1 to emulate it. However, the gate should have opened when he used the remote to copy it with the M1. So there's no way this would have worked at all. I'm really confused, honestly. I have no idea what they were trying to show. The flipper's been around for so long and there's been so many misleading TikToks that we're all really, really astute when things aren't working exactly the way they should. So in this case, it looks kind of weird. And again, I know it's a Kickstarter and they probably just had it saved, but we're gonna see these things and it's gonna raise questions. Which lets us enter this building. So we copy it like this. Select read, then clone the fob and save. And open Sesame. All right. I mean, that's perfectly reasonable. That's exactly how Flipper would work. As long as the Flipper or the M1 in this case can decipher the key, it can emulate it, no problem. So we learned a pretty good amount just from the Kickstarter video and all the stuff that they have there. It is a very promising looking project. And with over a million dollars worth of capital to play around with, it seems like it should be, you know, pretty doable for this to come to fruition. Now, I'm always just kind of leery when it comes to Kickstarter. So, you know, I guess really time will tell. Now, one other cool thing was I actually followed them on Twitter and they followed me back. I sent them a message and they replied. So that's a super, super good sign. Obviously, this is just another project I would love to see come off the ground. So. For their case and mine, I really hope for the best. So what do you think about the M1 from Monster Tech? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. Turn on notifications. We'll catch you next time.